Good afternoon, everyone. My apologies that Gospel on the Go is so late. Um, it seems that since I got back from holidays, I'm on perpetual tardiness time. And I'm struggling to get everything done on time and didn't get Gospel on the Go recorded until after church. So here we go. Um, you're getting it hot off the press. We will begin today with um, our land acknowledgement. In this ordinary season of our church here, we walk the path of trying to be faithful and, and seeking to know how we might best be in relationship with God, God's people, and God's world. We recognize that we are called to work together to contribute to peace and reconciliation as we learn and acknowledge those things that have broken relationships. As a congregation, most of us are not Indigenous. Rather, we are of settler colonial ancestry. And we have benefited greatly from living on Turtle Island with the first peoples of this part of God's creation. In humility, we know that we hold an important part, um, a responsibility in acknowledging the grounds in which we are privileged to gather as we worship the Creator. In humility and gentleness, we acknowledge that we live on Treaty 6 territory. This land was first shared by Creator with the Cree, Nakota Sioux, Blackfoot, Dene, Sarsi, Salto, and Métis Nations. In light of this history and understanding of our role as Treaty 6 people, may we dedicate ourselves to moving forward in the spirit of partnership, collaboration, and reconciliation as we learn together and contemplate the possibilities that lay ahead. I share with you first the prayer for Day Spring Ministries and then the call for the day and then the gospel lesson. So let us pray. Creator God, you have commissioned us to be bearers of light to your world. As you have given to us the day spring, who is Jesus Christ, our Lord, so encourage us to share him with all whom we meet. Allow us the privilege and the responsibility to carry the light of your day spring into the communities in which we live, work, and play, the communities you call us to serve. With your Holy Spirit's presence and guidance, may our work as day spring ministries bring hope, peace, and joy to your world. In the name of the day spring, who is Jesus, our Lord, we pray. Amen. And the Collect for the Day for the 16th Sunday after Pentecost. Almighty God, you call your church to witness that in Christ we are reconciled to you. Help us so to proclaim the good news of your love, that all who hear it may turn to you through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And I share with you, Today's gospel, the gospel is taken from um, the gospel of Matthew, the first of the four, math, um, four gospels. It's taken from the 18th chapter, verses 21 to 35. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him his debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he should would pay the, the, the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed. And they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should not you have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he should pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Last week, I spoke to you on Gospel on the Go 
about the need for all of us, each one of us, to find ways to remain in relationship with one another, especially during times of disagreement. We were reminded in the gospel that when two or three are get are are are, are, are sorry, I'm tongue tied. When two or three are gathered, Jesus Christ is in their midst. We were also given that strong juxtaposition of messages that spoke of how to deal with contention using just a few people. And then on the opposite side, the promise that when two or three more people agree upon something in God's name, God will fulfill their, that intention. Well, these are, of course, important for us to understand as we walk toward and invite others to walk with us toward our fulfillment of faith as we eventually join with Christ in the heavenly realm. It isn't about the end game that we are taught these lessons. Everything we're taught in the Gospels is important for the fulfillment of our faith journey. However, God has not asked us to live so heavenly minded that we are of no earthly good. We aren't there yet, and God still has work for us to do in this earthly realm before we are ready for the heavenly one. So what is the gospel all about beyond the salvation of our souls and the promise of being with God in heaven? I think and I believe that the gospels were intended to be as much a guidebook or a training manual for how we live in this life as they were one as they were for one one for how we get to the other life. After all, while Jesus spent a lot of time talking about the times that were to come, he spent most of his time teaching people how to live in the times that were already at hand. Relationships are a very large part, if not really the complete message of Jesus Christ. Everything that he said and did pertain in some way to the idea that relationships are to be nurtured, encouraged, and used to the betterment of the kingdom. Repeatedly, Jesus spoke of people's relationship to God, even if that was through the law. When he healed people in body and mind, he wanted them to give thanks and grow closer to God. Even those parables and lessons that spoke about conflict lead us to reflect on the nature of the relationships involved. To know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior means knowing him in a personal relationship. And being in relationship with Christ automatically means that we are also in relationship with one another. Both other Christ followers and those who haven't realized him in their lives yet. Everything in the Bible, everything in the Gospels is about relationship. That is a truth we cannot escape. This morning, our Gospel speaks of the need for forgiveness, and a parable is told that reminds us that forgiveness is a multifaceted thing, and not something so simple and straightforward that we can just do it and check it off our list. It is something that we do, and it is also something that we have done unto us. It is not easy to do, nor is it always easy to receive. However, it is a prerequisite for who we are as Christians in this world and who we will be as the saved in the heavenly realm. A secular definition of forgiveness is the intentional and voluntary process by which a victim undergoes a change in feelings and attitude regarding an offense Let's go of negative emotions such as vengefulness with an increased willingness, ability to wish the offender well. Forgiveness is different from condoning, excusing, and forgetting. And taking that, taking that, not from, you know, our old standard English, um, English dictionary, but from Wikipedia, the wisdom and holder of all knowledge this day and age. I think that the act of forgiving or asking for forgiveness has become quite commonplace. Forgive me seems in many parts of our passing conversations to have preempted the traditional excuse me or pardon me. The word forgive has become so frequently used that its meaning and depth have become lost in a meaningless play of words that remove it completely from what Jesus is speaking of in the gospel. Forgiveness is not something that does or should come easily. Like the act of saying, I'm sorry, There is an element of humility and depth that needs to be present when petitioning for or considering granting of forgiveness. When my oldest stepson was really young, he had this habit of crying and saying, I'm sorry, when he'd done something wrong, accidentally or intentionally. As he got older, he began to get quite perturbed when instead of automatically saying that it was okay, we told him that we weren't 
ready to forgive him. That, or more matter-of-factly, that he told him he wasn't ready for forgiveness. You see, he learned early on that I'm sorry seemed to make everything okay for him. He didn't understand yet that the words needed to be backed up with changed behavior and honest contrition. When he was very young, we didn't expect as much, but as he got older, we did expect the behavior and the attitude to change. Simply saying the words, I'm sorry, were about as meaningful as the debtor who is forgiven, but then goes on, on and shows no mercy to those in debt to him. With the words of contrition must also come a heart of contrition. Our world is one of instant and fast. You can pick up a gourmet meal on your way home from work. You can find the answer to that nagging question just by typing a few words into Google or saying, Alexa. Not often, it seems, are we expected to wait or keep moving without having the answer to our question, the fix to our problem, immediately. With forgiveness, however, the waiting is part of the process. Forgiveness can be as simple and as immediate as having your debts forgiven. But how often does that happen anymore? I certainly haven't experienced it. More often, when we speak of forgiveness in this world, and in particular in the church, we are not speaking about financial debts, but rather debts of the soul, rifts in relationships, trusts that have been broken and will take time to mend and heal. God does work miracles, and forgiveness can be given and received in the blink of an eye. But generally speaking, the act of forgiveness is an ongoing act that takes time, prayer, and patience. I'm often told about situations and circumstances in which people struggle to offer forgiveness to another. Time and again, I hear people state that the other person hasn't yet earned my forgiveness, or they haven't changed their ways and they keep repeating that bad behavior. It is so hard to forgive someone when you harbor resentment in your soul. The truth is that forgiveness, just as it, has, as it has been given to us by Jesus on the cross, cannot be preconditioned as something that will be offered if. The one doing the forgiving has to de dig deep into the heart to find that depth of care for the soul of the other, that they will turn to Christ and ask for his ability to forgive. That is a forgiveness that comes out of true love for the other and not out of a desire to determine that forgiveness has finally been earned. Truth be told, if Christ demanded that we earn our forgiveness, none of us would be able to carry the load of our own guilt. The act of forgiving is a process of the choice to love as Jesus loves. It takes time. It takes effort. It takes making a choice and following through on it. The other part of forgiveness we need to touch on is that of being forgiven. If we think it's hard to forgive, then we need to face the truth that being forgiven is actually even more difficult. Accepting forgiveness is, in itself, an act of humility. For most people, receiving another's forgiveness can be the most difficult thing we can do because it means admitting that we have done wrong. It means allowing ourselves to come face to face with our mistakes and even our dark intentions and becoming aware of the damage we have done, big or small. It also means doing the hard work of recognizing that something must change in our lives and in our relationships and then committing ourselves to doing that hard work. Forgiveness is all about relationships and reconciliation which is what Jesus shared with us in the Gospels so very many times. Whether we are the forgiver or the forgiven, we must pay attention to what is being said, what is being done, our part in how things are moving forward, and being intentional that we hold the entire relationship with humility and grace. If we are doing the forgiving, then we need to remember that the person we are trying to reconcile with is in a state in which grace is required. And that means that we must approach them with Jesus in our hearts rather than ulterior motives or the desire to teach a lesson. If we are the one being forgiven or asking for forgiveness, we must carry the truth that the relationship we are trying to restore has been hurt and is in need of gentleness and care. We too must move forward with grace and Jesus in our hearts praying that what has been broken can be healed in Christ's name 
and indeed in Christ's time. Forgiveness is a gift given by God to all of us through his Son, Jesus Christ, a gift that we have daily need of receiving ourselves. But it is also a gift that God is willing to teach us how to share with others as well. We must remember, though, whichever end of the forgiveness we are facing, that Jesus introduced forgiveness to us not as a selfish gift to make us feel better, but rather as a gift that calls us into community, a gift that calls for reconciliation and healing and learning to walk together along the path to salvation, a salvation that God provides for each and every person. Amen. We're going to take some time now for the prayers of the people. Um, if you have people that you would like to pray for, I encourage you to hit pause and take some time to offer to God, to the, to, to the Lord, your, the, the, the names of the people that you're thinking of or the situations. Prayers for yourself. There's nothing wrong with praying for yourself. Um, asking God to watch over you and protect you, to give you guidance and wisdom, to help you know how to make that decision or to let go of that relationship. Whatever is happening in your life, God is a safe place to go. Um, and even if you're struggling to know if God is real, what's the harm in trying? What's the harm in saying, if God, if you're out there, help me to feel your presence. Help me speak to me. Let me know you're here. You're not going to lose anything by asking. You may gain a lot. So I invite you to take some time. We'll pray um, in confidence, Lord, saying, I'll say Lord, and then invite you to say, hear our prayer. As we pray to the Lord, we lift up the communities and ministries shared with us in our various cycles of prayer and requests. In the Anglican Communion, we remember the Church of the Province of the Indian Ocean. In the Anglican Church of Canada, we remember Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Linda, our Primate, Gregory, our, our Metropolitan and Archbishop, and Stephen, our Bishop. We pray for the Provincial Synod of the Ecclesiastical Province of British Columbia and Yukon for the Dean, Council, and Congregations of the Southern Interior Region of the British Columbia Synod of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada. In the Council of the North, we remember the Indigenous Ministries of the Diocese of Athabasca. In our Diocese of Edmonton, we remember the Diocese of Nova Scotia and Prince Edward Island, the Right Reverend Sandra Fife, Bishop, for Church of the Nativity, Frog Lake First Nation, Lay Reader in Charge, Fred Matthews, for the Archdeacons of the Diocese of Bouye, in Burundi, Everest and Sabimana, Sibian in Tirandikura, Papias Masangesho and Leonidas Nizigiyimana, and we pray for the Alexis Nakoda Sioux Nation. We pray for our partner parish in Bouye, the Bagambo Parish. We pray for all who serve in the Anglican and the Canadian Armed Forces, remembering especially those posted to Garrison Wainwright and their families. We pray for their padres, Rob, Eduardo, Balamu, and Kent. We pray for our day spring ministry of St. Mary's Edgerton, St. Thomas Wainwright, and St. Saviour's Vermilion. In our day spring cycle of prayer, we remember Daryl Linball and Kelly Bowers, Kim Christensen and Gladys Clark. We pray for all who have asked us for prayer. For Ben and Gail, Dawn, Janiah, Rob, Stephen, Tricia, Leon, and all who we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. We pray especially this day for the bishop, um, the bishop-elect, um, Bishop William Cliff, as he travels to the Diocese of Ontario to take up his ministry as their new bishop. We pray for the Diocese of Brandon as they begin the process of discernment to seek their own new bishop. We pray for all of the places we have come from, from our churches and communities, from our youth groups and our, our curling clubs and our bridge groups and our poker nights, and all of the people that we celebrate life with together and support one another through. Merciful Lord, we pray for all who call themselves Christians, that we may become a royal priesthood, a holy nation, to the praise of Christ Jesus our Savior. We pray to you, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Stephen, our bishop, and for all and other ministers, that they may remain faithful to their calling and rightly proclaim the word of truth. We pray to you, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for King Charles III, for the leaders of the nations and all in authority, that your people may lead quiet and peaceable lives. 
We pray to you, Lord. Hear our prayer. We pray for our towns and those who live in them, Edgerton, Vermilion, Wainwright, for all of the places where all of our watchers and viewers are coming from, for the poor and the rich, the elderly and the young men and women, that you will show your goodwill to all. We pray to you, Lord. Hear our prayer. We pray for the victims of our society and those who minister to them, that you will be their help and defense. We pray to you, Lord. Hear our prayer. We pray for those preparing for baptism, that they may be strengthened in the faith, we pray to you, Lord, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all the saints who have found favor in your sight from earliest times, prophets, apostles, martyrs, and those whose names are known to you alone. And we pray that we too may be counted among your faithful witnesses. We pray to you, Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now um, a blessing. I'd like to share a blessing with you. The peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and with you and remain with you and all those whom you love and care for on this beautiful day and forevermore. Amen. Go forth as day spring people. Serve the Lord by sharing his life so we shall. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me today. I'm glad you found me on my second YouTube channel. I'm trying to make sure that those folks who, who don't wish to watch um, churchy stuff, um, you know, that they're separate, that separate out. So there's Church at Home with Rachel, which is the Monday to Friday stuff, and then Gospel on the Go over here that you found, obviously, if you're watching. So glad to see you here. Um, take good care of yourselves. Be gentle um, and, and just take time each day to pray or meditate or just be quiet and pay attention to the ways that God is speaking to you in the days and weeks to come. I will see you again next Sunday, the 24th of September, my 18th wedding anniversary with Rob. Be a big day, uh, but I'll have a great, have a wonderful week. I'll see you again next week on Sunday. And if I don't see you on Monday, Church at Home with Rachel. God bless everybody.